Okay, I'll make a motion that we open the meeting at, what time is it, 5.40? So make one. What's that? that? I said, so make one. I did make a motion. <laughs> wise, <laughs> wise, wise derriere. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, polling the members, uh, Dave Chanel. Yes. Uh, Vicki. Yes. Darlene. Yes. Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes. So motion carries. So we're open for business. Um, let's see. As far as uh, the chairman's additions, what I what I wanted to talk about is the um, uh, trying to expand the um, um, age restricted housing uh, uh, bylaw uh, to allow smaller lots in the downtown commercial and uh, surrounding uh, district. So you already, that's already on the work session. So it's not, it's not even after addition. Oh, okay. It's um, 3.2 3. <laughs> right. amendments on um, age restricted development. Okay, good. <laughs> Master John was here. This is pretty good. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's check minutes? out the, the minutes. Yeah. Has anybody had a chance to... Um... I've, you know, I've read them all. All right. Um, the, um, the minute, well, you want to just do them one, just do them one at a time? Um, sure. Minutes for December, December 8th. Um, I read that and I think I've sent comments back to, to Beth. Um, I don't know if anybody else has. Beth, you incorporated all the changes that I recommended, right? I did, yep. Okay. It's all track changes too. So I, made, any... I made some suggested changes on that one too. You did, thank you. And those were incorporated. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for December 8th, uh, 2021. Second. Okay, polling the members. Uh, Darlene? Yes. Dave Chanel? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Sean? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. The other... Um, the next one, I do have an additional comment. This is for January 12th. Yeah. And I know I, I made comments. I don't know if anybody else did. But Beth, if you go down to the third page, and this is okay. one I missed. Paragraph 2.2. Okay. Um, I'm there. Second full, second full paragraph begins with the word present. Cadence, mm -hmm. the second yeah. line, it says Alice. Alyssa Struthers and Michael. There should be a space between Ann and Michael. Thank you. I can do that right now. Yep. That's why I didn't email to you because I just confused it. <laughs> Other than that, I, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Good. I have it in bold as well. I don't know why I had it in bold. <clears throat> I. I that's creative, creative license on your part. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the drum roll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, is there a motion to approve the uh, January 12th meeting minutes? Yeah, I'll make a motion we approve January 12th, 2022 minutes. Second. Uh, polling the members, Darlene. Yes. Uh, Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Motion carries. Okay. Second, Sean Pearson. I'm sorry. Yes, Sean. Thank Sean you. second. Yep. Yes. And Bill, the minutes for February 12th, February 2nd. I wasn't there. I did review it for just for clarity and and you know flow, and I made some suggestions, but I don't know substantively, so I can't comment on that. Nor I nor will I vote. I think that. I mean, it, it's pretty exhaustive in terms of covering what we talked about. It's, 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 it's long. Yeah. <laughs> <Put that way. laughs> for both. <laughs> I was going to say for both, but I didn't want to go there. 
<laughs> but it's it, it it gave me an idea of what you guys were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So somebody else will have to motion that one. I'll just I'm gonna have to recuse. I make a motion to accept the notes from February second. 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 Okay, polling the members, Darlene. Yes. Okay, Chanel. I, I have to accuse. Oh, that's right. Vicky? Yes. Sean? Yes. D um, Dave Fanelli was present on that meeting. He was acting as a full member. According Dave, to the do you want to, uh, to vote on this one? Yep. If I was present as a member, then yes. Yep. <laughs> Yep, that's what it is for, for the purposes of these uh, minutes here. Okay. And I'll vote yes. Okay, the motion carries. So that's good, the minutes. Um, so with regard to that, um, that conversation, um, well, one of the things we talked about was uh, simply adding a dog grooming establishment to the um, special permitted uses in the residential zone in that, in that um, section there, B9. Um, and then I went to the planning board and they were saying, well, you know, what about, um, uh, what did they say? Dog training, uh, dog daycare. So um, I'd like to have the board make a few comments about that. What time we're... It's time to start the uh, continued meeting at this point. It is? Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll hold that for later. Thanks. All right. Um, so I'll make a motion that we, we um, reopen the continued hearing of Candace Eggerstrom for a special permit. Second. Okay, polling the members. Uh, Darlene? Yes. Dave Chanel? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Sean? Yes. And all of yes. Okay, so the continuation of the Agastrom hearing is then with us. So where were we at now in terms of this continuation? I think I, the conversation we were just having about the planning board, I think it's germane to this, this application since, since you took the steps to try to um, amend the bylaws to, to include guard growing in the bylaws section. So mm -hmm. and I wasn't at that meeting. So one, if you want to kind of give a summary of that. Yeah, basically um, section B9 of the... Um, the bylaw, uh, I just knocked the thing down. <laughs> okay. Um, gives a, this, uh, that's in the special permitted uses in the residential zone. And um, so uh, we had talked about it on the second as, as just adding a dog grooming establishment to the, to the possible uses. And then in talking with the planning board, um, uh, when that was earlier this week, no, I think it was last week. But anyway, they, they indicated uh, maybe we should add dog training and dog daycare to the, to the bylaw. Wouldn't those two kind of fall into kennel? Uh, the daycare might, um, the training, uh, uh, yeah, I guess because a lot of places do kennel and training. Bill, can you tell me what the section is that you talk that you were referring referring to? Hang on. If you look in those draft minutes, <laughs> I was just looking at the code sections at the for the hearing. But let me go back to the minutes then. Yeah, one forty five, forty six. One forty five. That's what I want to know. Yeah. And then it's item B9 is the, uh, B must be the special permitted uses. The way, the way it's laid out in that new codification is 
it's hard to find the 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 border between the as of right uses and the special permitted uses. But I think for clarity purposes going you know forward since we you know you, we were debating well dog grooming is kind of like a kennel it's kind of and we felt like we needed to pull that out as be specific about it we probably should be specific about dog training and um and daycare dog daycare as well just to keep make it cl clear which was the intent um yeah. now because it's special perm it's a special permit that means there'll be it's not like you can just go out and everybody can have daycare, but they'd have to go through a process to get the special permit right. and make sure the property is appropriate for the activity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives the abutters a chance to to uh, respond, respond. To, the, yeah. to the process too. And I mean, I, I don't, I, I think it's better to have uses like this in, in the special permit uh, right. wrapper. Uh, so, what, so what happened with the planning board? They they um they took the the draft that you guys created and they said add more to it. Yeah, they said add more to it, and and they're working on um, I forget what they're they're working on something too, and so um, they they scheduled a hearing. You know, the planning board has to have a hearing on any zoning amendments. Yep. Um, so they scheduled a hearing for um, April something or other. I forget. Uh -huh. Eleven. Uh, April 11th, <laughs> I wrote it down. So, uh, so yeah, so we have, uh, we have until then, well, it's, it has to be advertised, but we have, a, we have at least another week to, uh, to uh, finalize the wording on that. So who has the draft of that bill? Um, Is that something you created? Yeah, um, Beth has a copy of it. It's it's in the it's in the information that's in our packet tonight. Um, really, all we did was add dog grooming establishment, commercial kennel, comma adding dog grooming establishment, comma, and that just fits in what's already there. Can I offer a comment? Who's that? Uh, Mike Crowley. Mike. My Michael, opinion. yes, go ahead. Okay, um, just because it sounds like you're trying to expand uses to future uses. The other two allowed uses are not pet specific. Well, they're specific to pets, but they're not specific to date dogs as opposed to say cats. And mm -hmm. so it might be worthwhile if you're considering a more expansive allowed use under this to instead of having it be dog grooming, have it be pet grooming. Um, because mm. I don't know if cat, if cat grooming is a thing, but it could theoretically be. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so just, it's just an observation. And hearing you guys talk about it, it's where you're trying to get at, I'm like, okay, well, then maybe this might mm. be worth offering up yeah. just for consideration. No, that's a good point. And maybe peacock <laughs> grooming too might come, come down well, the road. I don't want alligator <laughs> grooming, you know? If you can get close enough to them. <laughs> what about horse no? grooming? Yeah. I have a horse. <laughs> I mean, that's a big animal to be bringing into a residential <laughs> neighborhood. So I, yeah. I would yeah. probably limit it to small animals. That would be, yeah. I wouldn't want my horse in the neighborhood. Yeah, just, let, just to let you know that when you the problem when you start defining something to to a specific use, it gets more and more verbose to use the word. And um, you know, so if you just if you just said dogs, that limits it to dog. If you say pet, then you said okay. What about the as Beth says? What about the dog, the uh, horse that uh, comes in and have his hooves groomed <laughs> or whatever? You gotta be <laughs> if you're gonna get to that level, then you're gonna have to be very 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 specific, or else people will take advantage of it. So, yeah, similar to yeah, like yeah. similar to like um support animals and we have the reason why i use the peacock we have had that in my office we had to justify a peacock as a as a support animal <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's difficult <laughs> yes how about domestic animal grooming um companion animal animal uh if we look at it says commercial kennel it doesn't say what kind of animal Mm -hmm. um, and then animal or veterinary hospital. Mm 
Well, I mean, typically with horses, the uh, blacksmith or the whoever travels to see the horse uh, rather than vice versa. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, not, yeah. I accept. Not I, too worried about being bitten by that one. Yeah, uh, no, I take I take Mike's suggestion to heart, but I still think maybe limiting it to, to a dog grooming for, um, might might keep uh, yourselves from have be opening up Pandora's box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I see what you mean. All right. Yeah, it seems like leaving it at dog, dog daycare. Well, if dog you don't, then you're going to have to grooming. define what kind of pet yeah. you're talking about. Limit yeah. by size, weight, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you could get a 200-pound yeah. Great Dane, I suppose, but it's still a dog, yeah. theoretically. So. Is that the only thing they wanted you to do, Bill? I believe so, yeah. Okay. We, we so, booked a spot for it on the town meeting warrant. Okay. Uh, okay. And so what's the next step on that, Bill? So is, do, we, do we vote here in the, in the ZBA in the, in the working session uh, on um, the wording? Or what, what's the next step? Yeah, I guess, I guess we'll have to... Uh, well, it's not that complicated. So somebody could just... Repeat the wording, and Beth will write it down, and we'll vote on it. And that, that yeah. do it. it doesn't. It doesn't. Even I don't even think it requires a vote. It, I mean, it could be submitted by you as an as a private person to the planning board. Planning board is the gatekeeper of that stuff. So I know, but the planning board seems to want votes. So they want it. They want it coming from a from an entity or a board. Uh, yeah. So let's let's use the silver platter approach. <laughs> Now, is that something we do here while this, the hearing for this applicant oh, is no, going on, or should we do it later? Let's hold yeah. that for the work session. It's the work session. Okay. I Which just said we'll it was between, between, between these two hearings. So, yeah. so um, I don't know what else there is to be said uh, for the original hearing at this point. Other than to tell Candace that um, what you guys have done, I, don't, I wasn't at the last meeting, but you did follow through with what was promised that you would bring it to the planning board and take the steps necessary to get it on the town floor, which it's, that's in the process. Um, so maybe just talk to the process of a town meeting and then the AG's certification of the, uh, of the warrant after that might be, give her an idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's um, with regard to the town meeting process uh, on a zoning amendment, um, most of them, they changed a few, few, but most of them require a two-thirds vote of town meeting. And uh, I don't expect to have any trouble getting this one through uh, town meeting. Um, so, and then what, if, the, if the town approves it, then um, uh, it gets sent to the attorney general, the whole town meeting warrant and the votes and like that. And, and the attorney general's people are supposed to go through it and, and make sure that we didn't break any laws in the process of changing our, our zoning or, or whatever else we did at town meeting. And typically they're very hands off. Um, the, uh, I mean, we, we, we've had some obviously, uh, uh, specious uh, zoning bylaw amendments that uh, the attorney general didn't didn't bat an eyelash and proved them. So I don't expect to have any problems with that part of it. But sometimes they return, Bill. The ones, the one that they had with it were, um, I think it was John Page was the chair of a, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know if it was, if it was a, uh, it was just a, re re a review of some of certain bylaw sections. That, that was last spring, and they're still waiting for that. Oh, wow! Because that was that was controversial. It involved a few people that might have taken steps to minimize the uh, <laughs> or negate the 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 um, application to the AG's office. But it's still in that's still in the process. Hmm. Um, but most times they come back within two to four months. Maybe Mike can speak to that. But that's my that's my that's my experience. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's ever been longer than four months, but yeah. but you say that there's one in the still in the process, huh? Yeah, it's uh, kind of like a modernization of of job descriptions for town town administrator and a couple other things that created a lot of heat. And um, 
But yeah, that was yeah. that was past the town meeting, and and that was and that was submitted. I think it's been submitted three times now because of errors in the submittal package. Oh, that's right. You're talking about the charter, then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, I understand that people have been trying to sabotage that particular puppy. So. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't come out and say that exactly. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. There was some there's some issues with that. Yes. Right. <laughs> I can't imagine how I made that mistake. Okay. All right. So, so how does this, uh, so with this particular hearing or where it's on the original request under, um, how do we manage, do we close that hearing? Do we put it on hold? What, what's the next? Because well, we, we have the follow on. Yeah. hearing as well that's related yeah, How do we... this, um, just kind of suspend it until we do yeah. the it, new application and once we decide on the new application then we go back to this yeah okay. it, it would have been i think it would have been better to have the new application before in in the lead and tonight as opposed to the latter um but i suspect what we can do on this one is we can continue it for a period of 35 minutes because <laughs> we can't yeah. have two meetings over at the same time yeah. so continue it till you know, I don't know, seven thirty uh, or whatever the whatever the date. What's what's the time of the other one? Six forty-five. So you can so you can you can continue it to six sixteen and and um, which is a minute after the other one's supposed to open, and then just don't open until the other one's concluded. And then you can make a decision then. All right. Is there a motion to do that? Sure. I'll make a motion that we continue this to later this evening at 6 16 p.m second polling members darlene yes dave chanel yes vicky yes sean yes and i'll vote yes okay all right so the now we have <laughs> we got 15 minutes before the next yeah thing you, you, you understand why we did that candace <laughs> She's <laughs> muted. Um, it's just that we can't. We you may not be able to. David, can you unmute her? There you there, go. There you so, so the, it, it may. You know, we can't. If we decide now on this application, the original one, it's probably going to lose because it's not in, in the defined special permitted um, actions, right? So we, we're holding that off, <laughs> and then we're going to rule on your other one that that's going to be in, in a, another fifteen minutes. And then when that one's done, then we'll come back to this one. And then if if, if the if the second one is approved, then you can withdraw this one. You won't have, you won't, you won't. I really have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was coming back in looking for a kennel license with existence. That's the one. That's the one at six at six fifteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So technically, you have two applications before us. One is for dog grooming. And one is for kennel. But I thought we were through without prejudice to dog grooming. We didn't, we can't do that. And you don't want to withdraw it until we until we decide on the dog, um, the kennel one. Once we decide on that, then we'll do the um okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it's just the way we have to do well, it. Well, we talked about you withdrawing it with without prejudice, but you but you didn't do that. Um so I did. that's why. Oh, Beth told me she didn't. Because I asked as, as late as this afternoon. Candace, I have, yeah, there's, I'm sorry, through the chair. There is no record no. of your withdrawal. Well, that's why I came into the office to do whatever I needed to do that day. I oh, thought you, um, I don't know if you recall, but you took the letter home with you and you didn't leave it with the office. So we didn't have a letter from you in our, in the office. We had a new application that you delivered. Hi. But there was no letter withdrawal. Yeah, you know, it has to be in writing. Um, it has to be a signed letter of withdrawal. That's, that's why we went forward today because we didn't have a withdrawal. Well, that was my intention to do that. I sorry, we're we're are, we're we are where we are right now, and, and it's <laughs> right. going to work out yeah. fine. So. Okay. Um. So let's see. So we have like almost fifteen minutes. Well. What? Um. So the, I'd like to spend the time to do some of that work session and uh, talking about the um, age-restricted housing in the downtown commercial. Okay. Uh, if, 
if you guys are amenable. Yeah. Um, it was interesting um, because I, I spoke to the building inspector about this too. And, um, you know, one of, our, one of our issues in town is that all of our development is in the aquifer. And what we really should be doing is trying to develop the RB, the non-aquifer parts of town. And, um, but the downtown, of course, we, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, uh, it, we're not gonna move it again. <laughs> <laughs> back up to Meeting House Hill. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and we were talking about the bylaw in general and uh, the requirement for town water is another issue that I have because when you go out into the RB, you find uh, less and less town water. And uh, I mean, as long as a person has water, which, I mean, if you want to build a house and you're not on town water you have to you have to dig a well or drill a well or whatever uh, i mean if a person has water this it, it shouldn't matter what the source is and uh i may be getting into trouble politically with the water department here but but uh from from what i've read um uh, we don't have a lot of excess water to go around so um uh, if we did some age restricted development out in the, the hinterlands, as it were, um, it, it would not be a uh, additional drain on town water. But anyway, that's a that's one one subject. But in terms of the downtown, I got the map. Uh, Michael sent me the the map of the water mains, and the downtown is pretty well covered. I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. So um, we could do the downtown commercial district and the, uh, but the other issue is we should probably look at some assessors maps and see if we can pick some parcels that make sense to include. Um, I don't know if we can include them in the downtown commercial district or whether we should just say, here's, here's a list of parcels We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll entertain projects in the downtown commercial district, but here's a list of parcels that are also eligible. Um, well, are you talking about changing the, 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 um, the classification of certain parcels of land in town? Yeah. So, so in, in other words, you want to do some spot zoning? Is... <laughs> well, no, it wouldn't necessarily be considered spot zoning. I mean, if you had one parcel, that would be spot zoning, but if you had a list of parcels, I don't, I don't see. But if, uh, but if the lists were contiguous, but if they're separate lists from all over the town. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not talking about going that far away. The idea is to try to get a little more housing in the downtown area. Okay. So that, but you're not creating a new zone either. You're just creating what's allowed in a particular zone, or maybe so many, so many feet um, away from that zone. Yeah, well, you could use a radius or something from the... Yeah, um, until we really looked at some maps to see what properties would be applicable to it, you don't know how to word it. Um, right. Okay. But the, um, the idea is, um, you know, lower the, the minimum lot size in that area to one acre and, uh, you know, allow... I don't know what the... Board of Health, one, I think. One acre? Yeah. You don't have a lot of properties that are one acre in downtown. Really? Yeah, that's why, I mean, <laughs> you're lucky to see a half acre for a lot of them. Yeah, that the, the application we have later this evening is, is I think it's 0. 0.55. Yeah, they're, they're all small. And in the downtown commercial district, I believe, oh God, I haven't looked at the chart in a while, I believe um, the minimum lot size is 15,000 square feet versus our, our A and our RB, which is two and three acres. Right. Our A is three and our B is two. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why we're having this meeting because, you know, <laughs> I'd like to get this right. And uh, if our minimum lot size is 15,000 square feet. Yeah. Um, so you could go with that and... And I think the thing to do is to talk to the Board of Health and find out how many bedrooms per acre they could support. 
And that would be a lot clearer than, you know, what they've done so far. And they've got these townhouses or duplexes with some, you know, some number of bedrooms. Well, I think that depends on, um, so if you, let's just, let's just assume everybody has town water. That takes the well radius situation out of the equation. Right. Everyone's in town water. So that means your structure, um, your lot coverage, you know, in your septic system has to fit on the lot. So it would just depend if you can fit it. Um, right. right. That's how many bedrooms. Right. Okay. You would self-regulate based on your lot size and what you could fit. Well, that's what's going to happen. I mean, you know, somebody comes in with a project like this one we're, we're talking about later, you know, um, uh, it's up to the Board of Health whether, right. you know, they think that the, or the, the septic design will support the number of bedrooms involved. And that's, that's like the bottom ten, that's line like, for that's density. Like 10 bedrooms. Pardon? That's like 10 bedrooms and a half an acre, right? If the one related tonight. So that's. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I don't, you know, we don't know the answer to that yet. No. That's because the septic design hasn't been done. Yeah. And then with, along with the septic, so, so you fit the septic system, but then the Board of Health wants a reserve area. So you can uh -huh. only fit so much with what you have. I think I'm a hair under, I think I have 0.49 acres. My four bedroom septic takes up. A lot of space and then I have reserves so I don't know how much bigger you know with your setbacks the, the shape of the lot I don't, I don't think you're getting that big what yeah. is what is the reserve is that if it ever fails yes yeah you need a backup plan basically yeah yeah that's where you get the raised septic and that kind of well no the raised septic is because of high groundwater oh okay um so, but the reserve area is like if, if the if the system fails. Um, in the case of the downtown commercial, it's all sand, so um, the chances of a system failing there. I are, would say instead of um, talking to the board of health with that particular, maybe we bring in. Um, uh, a septic installer because they've got the measurements down. They know how much you can fit, how many pipes you need per how many bedrooms and what the size of that leach field is and everything that might help us know what size lot would give you what you, what you're looking mm -hmm. for. Okay. All right. I can do that. But it might be a little bit of everything. This, it, so the more we talk about this, the more research it sounds like we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> to get it, to get it right. I, mean, I appreciate what was passed and what was done, but it's it it, it, it can't be used. It's, it's not a well. I, that's like, another interesting point um, from the building inspector is that that uh, three different people have come in to talk to him about building something under that bylaw. So, oh, wow. so I, I was kind of amazed that <clears throat> nothing had happened yet, but. I guess people are talking about it, so uh, we don't know what's going to happen, of course. But hmm. yeah. this is Mike Crowley again. Can I offer a point of information that's relevant? Sure. Um, I happened to recently ask the Board of Health what, are, how many, uh, what's the maximum number of bedrooms an area can hold, an acre can hold, and there is no specific guidance in terms of that measurement. Um, so you can definitely reach out to them, but I, I, it just so happened. I literally asked that question last week about how many bedrooms you can put bedrooms. Can you put on an acre on a septic and get away with it? And they're like, that's just, that's not a conversation that, that has been outlined yet. So, um, d definitely worth following up, but I, I'm, that's part of the answer you're going to get. Right. Yeah. That's weird. I would think they would yeah. know that one off the top of their heads. The engineer, well, I, the, 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 the septic engineer figures that out and designer and then they just approve it okay great it fits all their criteria so they approve it yeah but okay. but don't we know like if it's like a in-law apartment that how much the septic has to be upgraded to we, yeah we but they're they're already working with a septic design and in, in, in those cases so 
so they know how many bedrooms the you know the existing system can handle and if <clears throat> they made that one guy dig up his uh, tank and put in a, a double double chambered uh, tank you know yeah even though his original system was sized for four bedrooms and he was he was I, I think he dropped to three and he was going back to four. I can't remember, but um, it's uh, there's a lot of things to be done. Yeah. But, but right. Sean, when, when those things come to us, we don't, we always defer to the board of health for that kind of things. We, if we, even on the one later today, even if we grant the special permit, it's subject to the board of health and every other board that has to do their thing. No, but I was saying that the board of health doesn't know, but they know if it's like a, in-law apartment what it has to be upgraded to so that's yeah. what i was kind of confused okay about. You they, know, they have an idea of um, and again i'm sorry this is if i should step back but i'm just kind of continuing on the information that i was giving earlier um yeah. there are a lot of very specific situations about what the septic tank is and what the ground is that kind of more dominant than saying this is what you can do in an acre because there's no like optimal space that you can define what an acre can handle um, so it's not that they don't have any information. It's that there is no like specific thing that you can codify. Because yeah. there, there are too many variables. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, there's just too many variables. And God forbid you get any wetlands on there, then that changes everything too. <laughs> okay, so Bill, we're up, we're up, for the, up to the yes, time. Yes, we're, we're up. Is there a motion to open the, uh, the 615 hearing about the uh, dog kennel? Yeah, so move. Uh, second. Following the members, Darlene. Yes. Dave. Yes. Uh, Vicky. Yes. Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. So we're open for business. And um, can you read the notice? Uh, can do. Um, Thanks, David. Coins with Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A in the Townsend Zoning Bylaws. The Townsend Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a remote access virtual public hearing on Wednesday. February 23rd, 2022 at 6.15 p.m. on the application of Candace Hagerstrom for a special permit under zoning bylaws section 145-26B9, residential A and B special permit uses pursuant to 145-65 special permit. The applicant and property owner proposes to construct and operate a commercial kennel in a residence in the existing single family home of 478 Main Street, accessible map 11, block one, lot zero. Public remote um, only access to the meeting is via the link Copies of this application are available for review in the office of the town clerk and zoning board of appeals office during business hours by emailing a request for a digital copy to bfax and at townsendma.gov. Uh, William Cadigan, chairman. Okay. How'd I do? Excellent. <laughs> okay, let me get back to her. When I'm trying to get to... Uh, Public hearing, 6.15, all right. So let's see, um, there's one, one uh, document here that's labeled uh, Historic District Commission Decision, but it's actually the application for the uh, right. Certificate of Appropriateness. Have they made a decision on that, Ms. Ms. Hagerstrom? You're muted. You're muted, Candace. You're muted. <laughs> Dave, can you? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yeah. So they did not grant me my certificate of appropriateness. Well, why not? I wonder. Because it's a full glass door, not a half glass door. A little frustrating seeing that the building permit hey. was given to do it. It was no oh. grown up back then. And um, they're strongly suggesting that I change the door. Yeah, Bill, if you look at the, I, was, I didn't notice it until just now. If you look at the application on the bottom left, on bottom right, it says decision reason. No certificate will be issued. The work done was not approved as appropriate by majority vote at the commission. Certificate denied. And it's got all the signatures on it. Can I speak? It's not open for public discussion yet. Uh, unless, uh, Elisa, are you the are you the um, historic district? district? Yes. Okay. Yes. Bill? Go ahead, Elisa. We we, we didn't, um, Candace. We didn't approve a certificate for you 
but we had to act on your application. So that's what we did. You held the valid work permit. So you did your work. We can't tell you to undo that. You had a valid work permit, a uh, building permit. We could suggest what yeah. would fit into the neighborhood. And for all the change that actually happened there, the only thing the commission thought was that maybe just a little different door. What if I just added a grid to the door? Like the fire department down the street has, it's the same door, it just has grid. Would that be more appropriate? It would be more appropriate. Like I said, it. we could only make suggestions to you. Right. And ask I mean, why I, so I it's really in your hands. I wish this was brought to my attention when I originally. I know. I I you know. know I, I, I feel bad. Yeah, I'm yeah, in yeah. a position where to tear out a whole door and door frame is going to be more work. And I, I didn't even pick out the door. The contractor did. Yes, I understand, yeah. Candace. We <laughs> totally understand how this all went down. Um, we just couldn't say, "Yeah, we approve it," because right. it wasn't right for the district. But we just, that's just going on file. And and what we could do is ask you if sometime in the future, sometime down the road, maybe put a different door in. We didn't say you had to do it right now or tomorrow night. In fact, we didn't say you even have to. We just asked and right. were suggested. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, ever okay. since then, all I do yeah. is look at everybody's door when I drive up and down the yeah. street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, what I would suggest is, excuse me, everybody. It. Time, time out, everybody. What I would suggest, Mr. Chair, this is this discussion is not relevant to our, right, our right, meeting. Right. I agree. We can deal with that directly themselves. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Um, as far as going down to the town hall that day, I remember Beth had given me a template. I wrote something equivalent, brought it down. I think a little bit of the wording was wrong. I I remember we were discussing whether or not I just cross it off and signature it and leave it or if I was gonna reprint it. I can't imagine I wouldn't have gone home right away and reprinted it, I just... So if I did, I guess I'd drop the ball on that one if I it thought well, that it was done. All right, I, it, sounds like it, done. it sounds like you'll be able to work that out. Um, with regard to this hearing, we have, um, we have a uh, mandatory referrals uh, and... Um, Let's see. The, it starts with the Historic District Commission. So, um, I, I don't think we. It's we. We've covered that. <laughs> um, the Board of Health uh, has something to say about the uh, the kennel part of the thing. Um, Although the applicant has met with the Board of Health to discuss the grooming portion of this proposal, the applicant has not discussed a commercial kennel at the property. The Board of Health needs additional information from the applicant in order to determine if the septic system is adequate for the proposed use or if the use presents any other concerns from a Board of Health perspective. And there's a bunch of questions that they ask, uh, how many dogs, um, how do you intend to clean the kennel space? Would the kennel have any floor drains? And if so, where would the applicant propose to discharge these two? Would the applicant be offering overnight boarding or how do they plan to utilize the kennel? How many employees would the kennel have? Would all employees reside on the property? How does the applicant intend to deal with any potential nuisance issues, noise slash odor? Once the above questions are answered, the Board of Health can determine if the septic serving the property is adequate and also decide if the proposed use pre presents other Board of Health related concerns. The Planning Board, uh, uh, Mr. McNally as the chairman said he supports your application. Conservation Commission said it's not jurisdictional for Conservation Commission. All right, anything else to be said now for, um, we've got the, we there was, was some. Um, there was one from the Townsend Housing Authority bill as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think of. 
Did you did you mention that one? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, Hang it on. says at the February 10th meeting of the Townsend Housing Authority, it was voted that the THA has no comment on this project. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I, I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that when I was reading this stuff. All right. Um, the rest of them you've got. Let's see. There was an a butter comment. Oh, yeah. George Sullivan apparently owns the house next door and uh, is concerned about um, uh, if it's a dog kennel, it, it, would, it might become a detriment to, to our rental property. So he's written a letter to that effect. Um, okay. And his is 482 and 482R, so they're slightly further west. All right. Let me go back here. So at this point, the, 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 uh, uh, <clears throat> Do the board members have any questions? What happens with the health department questions? Like yeah, I was just going to ask that. Yeah. If, if we grant it, does that mean she still has to go through the health department and make sure all their checks and balances are done before anything can be done? Um, yeah, I think that's the case, but if you're only going to be putting up one dog, uh, I, I can't imagine it's going to, uh, be a huge impact. But, but Bill, yeah, I think if we would have to. Interior as well. There'll be nothing exterior. But that the septic and the floor drain and that kind of stuff, wouldn't that yeah. still come in? I, I don't feel comfortable if the health department isn't on board with it. Well, we always, like I said, we always defer to them. Well, we always defer. We always defer to them. But the thing is, if our if we issue a special permit, we could condition it that only one dog um, at a time is is being treated, um, which is what Canis wants to do, anyways. So it, that would limit. I mean, I guess, and if if it was only one dog, and the Board of Health wouldn't have a problem with with septic drain and feces and cleanup and all that, all the drain in the floor and all that stuff. It would be limited to one dog being serviced at a time. Uh, I think that's the way to get around it. So I might inc might say one to three, something like that, you know, just in case some, a customer brings in two dogs or something uh, at a time. The other thing too is um, this isn't going to be an overnight accommodations. It's going to be during certain yeah. hours. But even Darlene, even if you had a lot of, even if you had a few dogs that were staying like it was doggy daycare, they still would have a, you would still need a waste management program like we had on, mm. on down, you know, remember we did that one a few years back. You still need a waste management program, but if she only has one dog. Mm. Um, can I ask Candace a question? Uh, of I, course. <laughs> so, so Candace, did you, um, I think you worked with the Board of Health before when you were going under a dog grooming, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got and, their approval finally. Okay, so you got the approval for the dog when we were looking at this as a dog grooming business. So they didn't yeah, have a problem. Yeah, to hook up my dog grooming tub, I got yeah. the approval to run a sewer line to my shop. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think I think this this sounds resolvable to me. I just don't understand why they're even questioning it then, if if they already know. You know, they already approved it the way it was. Why are they questioning it now? Well, because I wasn't applying as a kennel at that time. Yeah. yeah. It's an application for a kennel, which is a, a whole other. Oh. You know, it's, the grooming is incorporated within the kennel, but the kennel is not incorporated within the grooming. <laughs> uh -huh. You have a dog, dog kennel. It, it opens yourself up to a whole sort of state regulations, waste management, pro all that stuff. Right. So how do I even go around that? I mean, should I just, I, I'm confused. <laughs> Well, that's why I was oh. suggesting one, one dog, you know, our permit allows for one, one dog being serviced at a time. Right. Well, I would say two, like. Um, oh, yeah, whatever, one or two, whatever. But that's, but, but yeah, the premise is that, yeah. 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 And you know, the, if you've got small dogs, you can't have just one. 
Yeah. The other, the other thing I, I have wanted, a few clients that have a few dogs, but yeah. they yeah. only come and stay for an hour to two hours. So it's not yeah. like it's day visits, I guess. Yeah. However, you want to figure it out. They don't. So I wanted to bring up something else. So, I mean, we have the, as Bill said, the other board members and Bill um, spoke to the planning board earlier in the month about putting a, putting a, a amendment on the warrant um, for including dog grooming as part of this bylaw that doesn't specifically allow you to do what you're doing now. You could suspend your first, the first hearing we had at, six, at 545, you could suspend that and wait for the town meeting to approve it. And then that would be an easy fix as well. But I don't, it's a timeline thing. You, you were talking about how long can you wait to do this? I mean, right now we're putting, you know, we're putting lipstick on a pig fight right now, basically by, by making this in a kennel because it's really not, but it's, it does incorporate it within it. So it's a way to fix it. But the right. best way is, is if, if we, if our bylaws allowed for a grooming in a residential, that would be the easiest because it's, that's the way it is. And that's well, I'm concerned about, about the kennel. I'm concerned about everything else that goes along with a kennel, like what I'm going to have to prove that I don't have any yeah. intention of doing. I, I shared Sean's, Sean's concern. I mean, that's, you know, I thought about it this afternoon when I was reviewing the documents and I thought the only way we could do it is, is to condition your use to be a very narrow use um, and not, not allow you to have you know, a, more, than a, more yeah. than a couple dogs on your premise at the same time. So well, actually, can... a kennel. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm, in, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so in the let's say so the the zoning change passes and by August it's been approved by the state. Could she yeah. apply for a new permit to make it under the grooming, or is it you just leave it? I would I would leave the other the, what, the yeah. first one in place, and we just right. we, we just need something in writing from her that says she allows us to continue it. Yep. Is because it's we, we have to act on it within a certain period of time. If you give us written permission to go beyond the deadline, we can do that. We can hold it open for months if 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 you will okay. if you agree with us. Oh. Right. But, but if she goes, let's say she says, uh, let's say we go and she gets the permit, special permit for the kennel as a kennel. Right. Then it gets approved that dog grooming is under the special permit. Does so she's she's got a permit to do operate as a kennel. Does does it make any sense, or is there any advantage for her to, in let's say a year from now, switch that special permit from kennel to dog grooming in the future? Um, the only the only thing um, that occurs to me is that um, if we approve the kennel. Um, it might take her a while to get the, all the, uh, the, other board, the other boards on board. Uh, right. What would I and, even say? It, that? Might, it might take her as long as it takes to get the new bylaw fixed, um, in which case it becomes moot and, and we reopen the, uh, the grooming uh, application. But what would I even say to the Board of Health? It was two months of meetings just for my dog grooming. How are you going to go and defend myself that I want to have a kennel? <laughs> like, what would I even say? Well, it would be I'm limited to what I... I... Yeah, yeah. I think, I think the thing is we're going to... If we limit it to saying it's one to three dogs or one to two dogs, you bring that to the Board of Health. It's, it's in writing to say it's going to be a small number of dogs and they should just... And it would be no overnight it, stays as well. You wouldn't be yeah. able to... Wouldn't that make it doggy daycare, though? Would that be like, well, why are you even getting a kennel license if you want to be doggy daycare? And that's not allowed in the bylaws. So right. here we are again. We're, well, we're going to fix that too. So no, but I think, I think you, you just need to go slow um, right. on this, on the kennel part of the thing. But meanwhile, you'll be okay until uh, we can get this bylaw changed in. So why can't we just put the conditions so that they're so, they're, it's a kennel, but restricted to the dog grooming at, in, in care activities of that time limit of that many dogs. And, and it kind of doesn't it just take care of itself. Yeah. With the conditions on there, the Board of Health is going to go, oh, okay, it's the same activity. Sounds good to me.
So do we do the motion. Uh, do we, uh, we didn't do public comment. Did, are we doing public yeah, comment? We need, to, we need to make some findings of fact that um, they, you know, give, give some sentences that we're going to put in here. Yeah. Findings of fact and um, conditions. Bill, Bill, do you want to have public comment, uh, limited public comment um, on this one before we do yeah. the findings of fact? Sure. Is uh, anybody uh, on, in the meeting have, have anything to say about this project? Okay. Ooh. That was easy. Okay. Um, so in terms of uh, finding the fact, we need to go through the special permit criteria which of course I don't have in front of me as usual. Um, has somebody got that? Is that, an, is that in our pack, packet? Are you um, talking about 145.65 bill, the, the A through G? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, 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 uh, I'll read it out to you and then you can go through your, what you normally do. <laughs> um, this is under 145-65 um, subparagraph A, adequacy of the site in terms of size for the proposed use. And uh, I think that there's no, um, no issues there. Okay. Subparagraph B, suitability for the site for the proposed use. It's a, you know, it's a residential site. It's, uh, it's got a, a, a nice big setback from the street. So uh, nobody, uh, nobody's really going to be uh, harmed by anything that's going on in there. And uh, subparagraph C, just for everybody, any board member can add in, add their comments to this. It's not <laughs> limited. <at all. laughs> um, C, impact on traffic flow and safety. Uh, I would say this is negligible. Um, one or two cars every couple hours is minimal uh -huh. at best. That's what yeah. I'd say. I agree. Um, um, D, impact on neighborhood visual character, including views and vistas. Aside from what the, what the historic commission has said with the door versus shades in the door or blink or whatever. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any, any um, change. In fact, I think it's been improved from what it, what it looked like before. Yeah. The activity is going to be taking place inside. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Be, the activity won't be visible from the yeah. exterior. Um, Subparagraph E, adequacy of method of sewage disposal, water of uh, source of water and drainage. Uh, we've already had the Board of Health weigh in on the, on the uh, grooming part of the, the thing, and uh, and it, we're going to restrict it to uh, two dogs. So I don't think there's just going to be a huge impact. Okay. Um, Subparagraph so F: adequacy of utilities and other public services. Uh, no impact on that. What'd you say, Bill? I said no impact on that. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Subparagraph G, impact on ground and surface water quality and other environmental and natural resource considerations. I think that steps are being taken to prevent uh, any impact. Okay. That's it for the uh, findings of fact. Um, Candace, how many dogs um, would you ever have on site at one time? Two, maybe three at the most if there were little dogs, but that's only a couple of my clients have three little dogs. Usually two or one or two. I think the low, the lower we qualify, the better it's going to be for the Board of Health to accept it. So would two, two be sufficient for you? Majority, yeah, would be no more than two. Okay. And that's maybe only 20% of my clients have two dogs. Okay. Do you, do you have like back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back appointments? Or you um, it's usually like a half hour lap in between the two of the appointments, okay. like one right. leave and one will come. All right. So, all right. So you're not going to have three people waiting in line because. No, no. I schedule the appointments by the hour and I usually do a 15, at least 15 minute gap in between appointments. So. Okay. How many do you do a day? So I, Wednesdays and Fridays, I do maybe six, seven little dogs. 
but they usually the little dog takes an hour if I'm grooming. And then sometimes I'll, I work on my husband's schedule because I have four kids. So if I do some other days, I'll just do two little dogs later afternoon appointments. I don't do many. Maximum is 20 a week. Okay. So I gave all that to the Board of Health. They have the full record of what my business was doing for a six months. That's that's why I kind of harped on the, the septic and all that because of how many dogs per week, per month, per year. But that's the only thing I don't understand. I guess I, she was... I, still, I still can't fathom why they questioned it. If they knew why it was going through. But it's it's a you know it's the it's the sheep in the wolf's clothing type type of mentality. She's looking for a yeah. grooming, but she but the only way we could get it approved is through a kennel permit. Yeah. Um, right. yeah that's I would say that's why. So um, um, Candace, what are your hours? Wednesdays and Fridays, usually like nine to five. And then I do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, like four to six or seven. Seven at night. Let's say Monday, Tuesday, Saturday. Monday, Tuesday, thirty, and Thursdays and Saturdays. I do like four to seven. I just do like a few little dogs. I work when my husband gets home and can take over kid duty. He's off on Wednesday and Friday, so I do daytime hours on Wednesday and Friday. You, you give him two days off. <laughs> he gets, no, he gets to take care of the kids, so it's not wow. a day off. <laughs> It's a day I was going to say, was... to come out here and be quiet. <laughs> well, do we want to say something like um, business activities are Monday through Saturday? Yeah. Nine to seven. Now, I don't want to limit you on like what if you change right. your days and, mm -hmm. and what? Yeah, what? I mean, I have a two and a four year old. So once the little ones are in school, I'll probably just do like five hour days during the day. I won't have to do around his schedule, but for now, it's what works. So I have another oh. couple of years of doing that. What's the, what's the hour? What's the hour range again? Start to finish? Nine to seven p.m. And that's Monday through Friday or week? No weekends. Saturday. Okay. Although, like she's saying, the four of those days are only part time. But I, I'd like to. You can't. Yeah. She's going to want to change times and days and things like that. So should have some flexibility there. All right. Is that somebody going to make a motion? Um, what other restrictions are those? So, so up to two dogs at a time. Um, well, can, Candace, do you have your own dogs? I have one. Okay. So I would, in the house. Yeah, in the I, house. Would, I would qualify for no more than two dogs, um, exclusive of, of the owner's pets um, on, on location at any one time. Okay. I and assume you're making the motion, Dell. You're writing all this stuff down. I can see you. I can see you going at it. So. Well, I'm hoping that our. Um, it's being written down for the that's keeping track of these for the uh, I want to say subject to this criteria, but there was something else and I can't think of it right now. So up to two dogs, we got hours. Um, there was something else I wanted to add in there. Just I'm trying to help with if the restrict if this is worded correctly, then the board of health isn't going to have a problem with it. Well, let's look at the board of health again. So just for reference, Darlene, the the um, the the, uh, the board of health was how many dogs um, does the applicant intend to clean the kennel space? Uh, would the kennel have floor drains? Would, would the applicant be offering overnight boarding? No. Um, how many employees would the kennel have? Um, you're, the, you're the only, you're the chief cook and bottle washer over there, Candace? Yep, yep. it's only. Um, <laughs> um, how, how many employees, okay, how does the applicant intend to deal with potential nuisance issues? Cut them fast and move them out. Yes, and, and my, my new room is fully insulated and very soundproof. Okay. <laughs> 
So darling, the only thing I would add to that li limit of restrictions would be that there's uh, no employees other than the owner. On, it's owner, um, owner um, operated with no, no additional employees. Okay, and um, do, is there a way to say no overnight? Limited to daytime, limited date to, to daytime. Yeah, service. but do the hours take care of yeah, that? Yeah, you're limiting it by yeah, the, the hours. hours would, the hours would take care of that. Okay. Yeah. So first we need to do that motion. I don't have it in front of me. Let me do a, try it from memory. I move that the proposed yeah. use subjects to the criteria. The proposed use will not have adverse effects that overbalance. Dave, you got it, will you read it? I can't find it. Um, <laughs> which overbalance its beneficial effects on the neighborhood or the town? <laughs> Yeah. You are the particular characteristics of the site. I mean, right. We've only been doing this for 100 years between the three of us. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second that. Polling the members, Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sean Pearson. Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Bill Cadigan. All right, is there a motion on the special permit? I move to grant a special permit under zoning, in the zoning bylaw 14526B um, to Candace Hagerstrom for the I don't have the yeah. Uh, we'll just stick with the what the. No, I, Dally, I, I, you kind of, you kind of um, shaded out there on your on your voice. Like when it was a motion. Can Can you do it? Because you have the legal notice. Yeah. A mo motion that we grant a special permit to Katis Hassan for a special permit under zoning bylaws 145-26B, nine residential A and B special permit uses pursuant to 145-65 special permit. Okay. Second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Polling the members, Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sean Pearson. Yes. And uh, I'll vote yes as well, Bill Cadigan. Okay, um, okay, I'll make a motion that we approve Bill Cadigan to sign on behalf of the, 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 the board members on the on the permit. Second. Polling <laughs> <laughs> the members, Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Uh, Sean Pearson. Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Okay, so. This so um, we still have the other one that's hanging out there. Yeah, I might recommend Candace that you um, you give Hang us. On, my dog is. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like he's hungry. I have to Did mute for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why you I don't have, have dogs. You have a permit for that dog? <laughs> oh, so, Candace, what I would suggest, um, because of the kind of the twisted road that we're going here, the, the best way to get this done would be as a special permit, as a grooming like you want, if the town meeting passes it and if the AG's office blesses it. That may come in July and August. It may, and it may take you that long to go through the Board of Health and all this stuff. So you, my suggestion would, to, would be to request for us to keep your original application open. Um, you'd have to do it in writing. Um, let's say till, um, I'm not sure how to do that because we, we have to, it has to be a date certain. We can't just leave it, leave it hanging um, open-ended. We need a date certain. Um, what do you think, Bill? Are you, are you able to get the leg out from I under was, the dog now? I was watching my wife try to tame the, uh, the beast. <laughs> so we Say have that to, again? I, I, I suggested that she keeps the, uh, the first application open, but it's got to be yes. to a date certain. Um, you want to just say like, July 20th or something like that? or And then if it doesn't? Um, well, we can continue it to a date uncertain. We can agree agree to that. And then we don't have to. As long know. as she's, you know, as long as you put in writing, I guess, if you do that. Yeah, right. 
So what do you think, Candice? That's fine. So will you, will you go down and see see Beth um, tomorrow yeah. or the next day? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So um, um, as well, far as the Board of Health, are they going to contact me or I need to contact them? Will they? <laughs> <laughs> Bill, why don't you go through your normal normal routine about what how, My normal how routine? Issue. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what to tell you about the board of health, but uh, my advice is to go slow. Um, but anyway, yeah. um, with regard to this decision, we have 14 days to file it, and then there's a 20-day uh, appeal period. Um, and um, at the end of the 20 days, you can get a letter from the town clerk certifying that no appeals have been filed because any any appeals would have to uh, be copied to her. And um, then you also have to record the decision in the registry of deeds. And uh, is it just Cambridge now or I don't know? You, you can do it anywhere now. Yeah. Uh, Cambridge or Lowell. Oh, you can go to Lowell. Um, yeah. But in any case, you have to record the decisions so that... Uh, it's it's uh, tied to your deed so that you know we don't if if we all lose the paperwork it's it's the registry still has a copy. <laughs> so so Candice, the um we can increase we can quicken up the time when the, the decision is written by just talking nice to Beth so to speak. That's right. the twenty day appeal period we can't touch that that's that's state okay, yeah. um, but. Um, the Board of Health is going to know what we did because Beth will talk to him. And then I would just recommend that go, go see him and get the ball rolling. Like, like Bill said, just so slow. So, um, so that hearing is over. I'll, I'll make a motion that we, that we reopen the Candace Hagstrom um, hearing for special permit under 145.26B. There a second. 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 So we're going to make a motion to uh, continue this, or when the date on starting? Yeah, Sorry. after we after we reopen it, yes. So polling the members, Darlene. Yes. <laughs> Dave <laughs> Chanel. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. So now we, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to continue this hearing to a date uncertain. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm just not sure that you can do that. This is, um, I'd feel if you're not talking too loud, uh, Beth? this is Beth. Yeah, we can't barely, barely hear you. Pick up your. Oh, sorry. I, I'm just not sure that you can do that. Uh, I don't know if you have case. You know, if you have some. I, no. I think you have to be. A, I think it has to be a date certain myself. But. I do too. I, I'd feel much better about that. I don't care what it is, but I don't think I can continue a public hearing, clear administratively without a date. Okay, time. well, how about the 5th of July or something like that? Well, let me ask well, Beth. This is the last day of a month. Well, before we <laughs> pick a date, Beth, do you have any any um, understanding? Or maybe maybe um, I'll bring John Barrett into this. Do you have any understanding as to when the town war? Think you, if you don't want us to call you, John, you got to hide your picture because we won't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, run, but I can't hide, I guess. When, when, yeah. the, uh, when, the, when the warrant's <laughs> submitted to the AG's office, what's the, what's the typical turnaround time? Um, I believe the town clerk said it's um, a month. So, I mean, and I don't know. I mean, she may, it, it, yeah, we'd have to ask the town clerk. But to even when months. town meeting passes it, yeah. like when legislation is passed by Congress, it's going. You know what I mean? Unless otherwise, as far as I know, you don't have to wait for the AG. Oh, no, we do for, for a land. Oh, we do. We do. Yeah. Okay. John, what do you think? Um, Yes and no. Um, the, the town, when the town approves it, it's approved, but it's still subject to the attorney general's approval as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're fairly confident that the attorney general is not going to find any problems with it, uh, mostly it's procedural yeah. uh, issues, then uh, you could probably you know rely on that. Um, as far as the turnaround time, I, I would say, David, it's more like two to three months that's what um, i thought yeah okay because uh they do have 90 days to uh, give a uh, decision on a zoning bylaw change right. and sometimes they ask for more time if it's a complicated thing like uh marijuana or something but that's not <laughs> your case here so no. i think okay. you might hear from them sooner the good okay. old days <laughs> but i think Why you should I'm... probably it doesn't give unsolicited advice but i think you should probably have a date certain 
um, rather yeah. than okay. Taylor. All right. Well, uh, uh, John, I think we solicited you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a solicitor anymore. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I know. I missed. I missed all those referrals. <laughs> How about if we? How about if we stretch it out to August thirty first? Uh, I was actually going to suggest. I was actually going to suggest um, first week in June. So if we feel comfortable with it passes town meeting and it's a simplified yeah. adding adding of dog grooming into a bylaw, we can just pass it and just. Yeah, I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. should be one on the count. We're going to have to have a special meeting just to continue this sucker. Well, we could do that with three people, though. We could do that with a, it's just an administrative process. We yeah. do with three people. Oh. Well, my thought by stretching it out is if we had another meeting between now and then, you know, we could just get a letter of withdrawal of one of, I don't know, or uh, just have more time to take care of it. But whatever you guys think is best. Um, do we not have to call us? I'm going, I'm, going with, I'm going with the first. When, when is town meeting? What's the date on the town meeting? May 3rd. Yeah. May third. Yeah. May third. I would I would say Wednesday, June eighth. That's what I would say. Okay. Is there a second? At what time? Sorry. Um, that was at five thirty. You didn't you didn't hear that? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Oh, good. A second. Okay. Polling the members. Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sean Pearson. Yes. Uh, and I'll vote yes. Okay. Motion carries. Perfect. So, Candace, that means we'll, we'll we'll take on June 9th, if it passes town meeting, we'll, we'll be able to get it. Okay. Hello. Hi. Sorry, the battery was going to die. I just plugged you in. Okay. Okay. So, we continued the uh, first application to, to June 8th, Wednesday, June 8th at 530. Okay. And um, if it passes town meeting, then we'll take we'll take that that um, application up on a vote on a vote. So what happens to the one we just approved then, the kennel? What do we do with that? If we were to switch gears, go back to the dog grooming, approve a special permit that way, what do we do with this? I think um, oh, I'll let Bill answer that one. I, I I think we'll just leave it out in hyperspace. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a chance you know. that the book won't even move by then. <laughs> but June eighth, I don't, 8th think, is it'll, I don't think it's going to bother anybody. Yeah. This, what about my uh, neighbor that is concerned about my upcoming business? Uh, well, yeah. we considered it when our with when we were voting. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll talk to George and tell him that it's not a big deal. Okay. I need to talk to him anyway. Okay. So what time is this next hearing? 5 30. Oh. 6 45. <laughs> we're, we're a few minutes late. All right. Good luck, Candace. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> and I will come see you tomorrow, Beth. <laughs> All right, so um, is there a motion to open the... Uh, I got to find that one first. 241 Main Street application. So be it. Second. Uh, polling the members, Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Yes. And Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay, we're open. The clerk will read the... Uh, Notice no. the clerk will read it once he finds it. Oh, okay. hang on. I, I, I've got it here. I, I literally can't find that one. In accordance with MGL Chapter 40A, if I could read, and the Towns and Zoning Bylaw, the Towns and Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a remote access virtual public hearing on Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, at 6 45 p.m. on the application of CJ Realty Trust. Uh, what is this? UDT dated 7-24-2012 for a special permit under zoning bylaw 145-65 and 145-27-C3. 
The applicants are proposing to convert a building into mixed use by adding four two bedroom apartments and two one bedroom apartments to the second and third floor of the pre existing non conforming commercial structure at 241 Main Street, otherwise known as the Towns and Floors Building for those <laughs> people who have been around. <laughs> Uh, map 51, block 94, lot zero. Public remote only access is by a Zoom link and parties wishing to speak in support of or in opposition to this application may do so in writing prior to the hearing or at the virtual hearing in person or represented by an agent or attorney. Copies of this application are available for review in the offices of the town clerk and the Zoning Board of Appeals office during business hours or by emailing a request for a digital copy to... Beth, William Cadigan, Chairman, Zoning Board of Appeals, published in the Groton Herald, Jan January 28th and February 4th, 2022. Okay. Bill, before right. we continue, before we open, can I just ask a, a general question of the applicant and, and the, the attorneys that I see on this thing? Who, sure. Who is the law firm that's going to be um, doing the condominium um, structuring? Um. At this point, uh, David, uh, John Barrett uh, speaking for uh, C&J Realty and, and Mark Curtis. I know the initial app, uh, request to the uh, building uh, commissioner was about converting it to condominiums. Right, that's what the application was, yeah. But, but um, that's not actually what the application uh, and the appeal is. The appeal is just for a mixed use. Okay. But it's still, yeah. though, I see, because that's all we do in my office is, is condominium work, and we do a lot of... The well... So I just want to make sure I'm not conflicted out. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't do condominium work. And I know so you I, don't. You've given me compliance no. before. Um, <laughs> and, and I told uh, Mr. Curtis, who's, who's here, by the way, um, but um, um, that um, it would probably be... Uh, behoove him to get someone else to deal with the condominium conversion, which I see as a completely separate legal issue as far as the holding title to the property and not really um, a, a zoning concern. Okay, so let me, let me ask you a professional ethics 101 question. If I rule, if I participate in this hearing and then Mr. Curtis comes to uh, Perkins and Ansel in uh, Westwood, by the way. I'll give you the number in a minute. Um, <laughs> would that preclude me from being able to do in the uh, structure on the condominium? I would say probably, David. Yeah. I mean, if you have a, a have participated in a particular interest. I would uh, say so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's so. nothing. Mark, you don't have anybody. Have, you haven't selected anybody for the condominium work yet? No, I haven't. Okay. No, and, I, and I really, you know, it, it, it's kind of like just an option. I mean, really what we're looking to do is uh, get some apartments in there, small apartments. Okay. Just it's just to, an uh, excuse that you're going for. Right. Okay. All right. I'll, con I'll continue, guys, John. Thanks, John. All right, Dave. Thanks, John. Yep. Uh, so, if Mr. Chairman, I might proceed. Yeah, go ahead, John. Okay. Um, and thank you, uh, Mr. Cadigan, members of the, the board, uh, I guess I think most of you know me, although I, I know there's a few new faces, at least to me, on the zoning board. You've probably, uh, I think, uh, Vicki and Sean, you've probably been on for eight years, but that's probably how long it's been since I've been before the zoning board. Um, maybe not quite that long. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm representing the C&J Realty Trust and uh, Mark Curtis. Um, Mark and his uh, Realty Trust purchased the property this past summer, I think it was in July, Mark, um, that uh, the property changed hands from uh, the Townsend Center Realty Trust, which folks are, folks are probably familiar with, uh, John and Linda Giardina and Ed Hayward. Um, and um, the thing that motivates the current request is the fact that uh, unfortunately, uh, commercial um, needs in the center of town have have uh, kind of slackened off. Um, uh, we're, we're feeling kind of lonely up here on the second floor uh, right now. Um, uh, we're the only tenant. And uh, I think Mark, uh, in an effort to make the building, you know, commercially viable, uh, has uh, determined that the thing to do is to uh, put some apartments in. And it seems that it's, it's something that is uh, fairly common in the, the downtown area uh, to have uh, some commercial on the first floor and 
uh, residential on the uh, upper floors. Uh, so we're submitting this uh, application for a special permit under uh, one, was it 145.27C and uh, section 65 for special permits uh, to allow um, the conversion of a part of the property uh, this basically be the second floor and the third floor uh, to have four two bedroom units and two one bedroom unit. Um, I think, you know, some of the amenities of the fact that it, uh, you know, it's in the center of town, it would allow people to, you know, fairly easy access, walking access to the post office, uh, town hall, uh, barbershops, you know, all the amenities that we have uh, here in downtown Townsend. Um, and um, uh, just um, going to the uh, special permit uses, um, I, I would just suggest that it's uh, compatible with the, the area. And I'm gonna have to flip to my, my uh, section here on uh, section 65 special permits. Um, you know, the, it's obviously it's an existing building, so there's no change in the footprint. Um, what year is the building, John? Um, Alan, you would ask me. My recollection is it is um, built in 1988, 89. Yeah, that's about right. Um, <laughs> because, and I'll, I'll harken back uh, to the, my days on the zoning board, uh, because this was one of the last uh, matters that I dealt with, I believe, as a member of the zoning board in, in the, about that time. And the issue then was whether or not the, the, the variance would be granted to allow the building to be set f more forward, closer to Main Street, so that it would be in line with all the other buildings on Main Street. If some of you might remember the building that was here before uh, this building uh, was a long rambling building uh, that contained Townsend Pizza, Townsend Package Store, uh, I believe an antique shop, and at one point, uh, the, the Wren Cafe, uh, the which Wren. was the, the one and only uh, bar uh, and, uh, in the town. Um, sadly, uh, those buildings uh, burnt down sometime in the late 80s, and this building was constructed, and uh, that was the thing that happened with the zoning board. I, I think the only issue was that... Um, that setback variance uh, so that, because what that allowed quite frankly is the passage at the rear of the building to access the parking that's in the back lot. Um, I don't know if all of you, all of you have the uh, plan that was submitted with the application. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but I think we did well, have eight we copies. A, we got a small copy of it it's really hard to read but yeah but you, you should have all gotten eight copies or at least i submitted eight copies of the large plan too we all um they had digital copies would you like me to screen share it oh if you can do that beth that'd be good because i kind of queued up to do that but i don't know if i'd be able to do it okay well if uh, hartley would let me do that i'll screen share or dave um whoever Um, yeah, that, that was originally supposed to be a Butler building. <laughs> not sure if Hartley heard me or not. We um, resisted. <laughs> Hartley or Dave Fonelli, can you give Beth the sharing capability, please? I just, this is Hartley. I just did. Oh, All right. Thank thanks, you. Hartley. All right. Now I got to figure out how to do this. Not so. All right. Oh. Sorry. Let's see what yeah. I can do for you here. Hmm. Oh, yeah, let's see. Um, that, it's still a bit hard to see because it's reproduced. It's an old right. plan. Um, yeah, right. it's and really it's old plan. plan. Yeah. So how, <clears throat> how can I help you see it better? Um, well, I think people can see where the original building is, uh, well, the building right now, 
and it's in the front uh, section of the plot. And then there is a passageway and there is a, uh, <clears throat> a shared easement uh, between um, uh, C&J Realty and uh, McNabb's properties. Uh, McNabb's own the properties here. Um, and there's a shared easement right through there that allows um, access out to Bow Street. Beth, can you zoom in on that? On the oh, let me try. Yeah, go to go to like 125 or something. Okay, is that better? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, you want to zoom so in more, I, John? Say again, Dave. You want her to zoom in more? Uh, I think that I think if you guys can see it, it's that's all right. I mean, you can see how the the building, as far as the variance from times you know back in the '80s, there was yep. allowed so that the building would be set more forward along the lines of everybody else on Main Street, and that um, that uh, that allowed communication from this parking lot area here out through Bow Street and to this parking lot area here, which is also owned by. Uh, now C and J Realty. Um, so um, the, one, the one upshot to my chagrin, I was not a tenant at the time. I came in in about 1990. Um, and um, the only thing that's uh, affected me, quite frankly, is the fact that because it's not, there's not a 40 foot setback, we couldn't have a freestanding sign to show who the occupants were in the building, which we never pursued as a variance to get a freestanding sign. But anyway, I, I yeah, do have we, a sign. We would have denied it, John, anyways. Yeah, knowing, that, knowing uh, yeah, my yeah, fondness for me, guys, I, I guess that's probably what happened. So maybe that's what didn't do it. Um, but anyway, um, so I think, you know, that to, to just refer to the, the special permit criteria, that I think the, the lot is adequate for the proposed use. Um, we believe the parking is adequate um, because uh, there are on this plan, there are, there are 28 spaces. Um, the, for some reason, there are spaces that didn't get counted in there because there is a spot for parking immediately behind the building. Uh, and if any of you are familiar with the environs at all, <clears throat> there is a parking spot where I, I oftentimes park, but not always right at the rear of the building. And then there's also a parking space at the entrance to the towns and floors um, uh, entrance. Uh, so in that little spot, I, I know I've got my pointer here and you guys can't see that, but um, uh, let's see. Well, we're, we're, we're not worried about the parking. I mean, that's, that's site plan review, so. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they, they would. Um, yeah, we, we then we thought best. Uh, let me say that to go before the zoning board first to see if the the concept here as a as a special permitted use would be acceptable to the zoning board, and then uh, mm -hmm. if that was the case, then we'd be going to site plan review uh, yeah. with the planning board. Well, uh, I, still, I still think you got the cart before the horse because you don't have a septic design, and so you don't know how many bedrooms you can support in this. Uh... Um, I, I know, Mark, maybe you can speak to that because they have had the, the Board of Health out there and a, a septic design has been done. Sure. But uh, This is Mark, board, uh, board members, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, there is a septic design that is done. We haven't admitted it. We met with the, the Board of Health agent to conduct the perk test and everything. Uh, the design is actually parking lot approved. It's H20 instead of traditionally H10. Um, we do meet the, the criteria. We're actually above and beyond that um, somewhat, not drastically, but we're above it. Uh, each the way, the way that this basically works is two things, obviously groundwater and soil conditions. The same sand that's there is what we, I'm in the excavation business, the same material that's there is pretty much what we haul into sites for septic systems. It has a two minute perk rate. Each, each bedroom uh, has, to, has to represent 110 gallons per day. That's the flow ratio for each bedroom. Right. Um, that, that's title five standards. So when you, when you add it all up, as far as the ratios that we gotta 
uh, meet the criteria, the design criteria that we have to meet. We're there as far as uh, uh, what, we, what we're going to submit to the Board of Health once we get through the hurdle with the ZBA. Okay. That yeah. was my it's question. Like it's actually all, all done, the, uh, the septic design. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so, um, I guess try to uh, sum up. Uh, well, we feel the, the site's adequate, the, there's adequate utilities. We don't think there would be any uh, traffic uh, impacts from this. Uh, pro probably, if anything, it might be less than would be if the building was fully occupied by um, commercial operations. Um, should be no impact on groundwater or uh, surface water. Um, as the no impact on the neighborhood's visual character. I mean, the building's gonna stay the same. Um, I think I should speak to the issue though, as far as this, the septic system, so that people are aware of this, that uh, the, the septic system would be installed underneath the parking. Um, right. and, and that's, I understand is a, a permissible thing with the, the Board of Health. Um, so there would be some disruption in the parking for a period of time until that that was installed. Uh, and I be, by the parking, I mean the parking in the rear parking lot, you know, the, the back of the, uh, the back section there. Um, also, um, just a note that um, there, there is an agreement between uh, well, C and J Realty. The original agreement was with Towns and Realty Trust. And uh, Charlotte McNabb uh, for uh, parking uh, in the back parking lot. So, you know, there, there would be some use by customers or employees of uh, the McNabb Pharmacy and the uh, medical assistance or medical equipment building. Um, so, um, well, that's a site plan uh, review uh, issue. Parking, right. But we think that the parking, it, with the apartments, uh, the parking that we we feel would be needed, it'd be 25 spaces. There's 28 on this plan, and um, I believe that there there would, should be two others acknowledged in that. But, of course, like you say, Bill, that would be uh, up to the planning board. Um, John, how many uh, commercial, uh, separate commercial uh, establishments will you end up with? Um, I believe there'd be what three mark. Yes, yes, that's um, what they would be. So that's all on the first floor. Then the the uh, upper floors are for residential. Right, and I think it's if I could mark say that it's going to be phased in because well, I really that's exactly I how really want to move out of my office immediately um, <laughs> uh, since i'm on the second floor as many of you know um but um the, the commercial would be on the first floor the main floor and the uh towns and floors down um in the basement basically mm -hmm. okay so what's going to develop first john is the third floor is going to move gonna, gonna... Y yes dave I, I believe that's mark's plan right mark to, to start with the third floor exactly. and exactly yeah. Work his way down. So, so when I saw when I saw this application, I, the one really um, ending question was, "Where are you going?" <laughs> That's yeah. what everybody's been asking me. <laughs> to the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Expectably, that uh, I think Mark's finding a, a nice little office at a real low rent for for me and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, so there'd be there'd be six residential units, so six apartments, and then how many commercial units? Um, well, it's it's a little bit hard to say, Darlene, in the sense that there there could be four, I imagine, maybe even five, because the way this building is set up, I mean, you could have, <clears throat> and some of you may remember at one time. Um, 
uh, on on my floor, the second floor, there was my office. There was Dan Murphy's office, and there was a uh, Schofield Group. On the the first floor, there was um, uh, Edward Jones, uh, Hayward at uh, Robbins Insurance, and I guess it was that's what it was, uh, Ed, uh, Robbins Insurance and um, uh, Ed Jones uh, uh, investment brokers there. So two and three upstairs. So it, it can change. It you know it right now there's what Mark three tenants on the first floor. I uh, there's two on the two on the first floor. There's four total in the building right now. All right, so two on the first floor, one in the basement, and me, and the so rest is empty. I'm not worried about, I'm not asking about occupancy, but how many physical units are there? Well, that, that's, that's, that's well, well, I guess right, well, I guess right now. John, can I, excuse, can I um, interrupt for a minute? Someone is, we got some back feed going on. If, if you're not, if they're not talking, could you everybody mute themselves so we can hear? That's better. Uh, so I think Darlene's question was, was that uh, how many are there now? Yeah, yeah. So I know um, in the basement there's one, that's yeah. one of course. And on the main first floor where, how many units are there? There, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but I believe two. Okay, okay. Well, I think that, that you know, you may end up um, parking space limited on those commercials, that's all. Because I think they, it's a five space minimum per commercial use, but that's just my recollection. I don't know for sure. Yeah, I think you're right, Bill. I think that the five, five spaces, but you know, the, the bylaw does have kind of a funky thing to it where it's, I, I, and unless it's changed without my knowledge, but I think I got the most current version. It, it says if it's retail, it's a minimum of five spaces or, uh, the floor space divided by 180 square feet, or if it's office or professional, it's the floor space divided by 200 square feet okay. to, to come up with the number of parking spaces. I think so you're right about that. Yeah, it used to be pretty elaborate. I guess there's maybe a little bit of difference between retail and office, but- Yep, yeah, um, there is. Okay. Anyway, um, that's- um, um, I don't know if the board has any other questions. Mark, do you have any other things that you'd like to? No, um, I think we pretty much uh, mentioned, it, as far as I can see, pretty much everything. Um, I guess just one other thing that I guess I could mention is that the, the building building is fully sprinklered. Uh, it does have an elevator, um, so um, we think that uh, being able to do this would make make sense. And you would, could walk to the band concerts, not have to take your car. <laughs> okay. Actually, you just open your window, you could listen to the band concert, I guess. Right. Yeah, you can hear the clock too. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Bill, we have, to, we have to go through the comments because one of the comments was in yeah. regard to the sprinkling system that they needed to yeah. upgrade it from a, half, from a one inch to a one in and a half, one and a half inch. Yeah, the, the, I don't know. Oh. Did you did you notice those comments, John? Or did no, you? I did not. Okay, oh. let me let me go read the comments. Okay, the Board of Health said um, property is served by town water, which is acceptable to accommodate the proposed use. Um, and it says no plans have been submitted for the septic system and blah blah blah. So. <clears throat> Uh, the water department uh, wants you to upgrade your supply line from a one inch to a one and a half inch line or zinch, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> Must be a technical term. I don't know what that was. I was zinch? trying to trying to figure out what he wrote. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then they want to know how many units in total will be in the building when done. So... Um, you sh we'll we'll get you copies of these. Um, okay. The Housing yeah. Authority voted to support the endeavor. Uh, Conscom says no jurisdiction. The Planning Board uh, Chairman said that as an individual, he supports this project. Anything else, David, for comments? 
No, those are the ones that I've seen. I, 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 I was going to comment after the meeting about Lance's from the planning board. He says, as chairman of the planning board, I as an individual. That's like right. an oxymoron. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you got to have the vote of the board, not an individual. With that, we just put it out on the main street and ask people to respond. You know? Uh, all right. So we need to do the findings of fact, which John has conveniently... Uh, put in uh, his application, whatever I did with that now. I can read them again. I mean, we have to do our own fines. We can't We can't rely on the applicants. Yeah, you can't stop mine whole cloth there, Bill. Because if I don't even know why we would be meeting. What? If we did that. I can't? <laughs> oh, this is not, this is oh, not the old days. I, 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 <laughs> Bill, before we go, though, we, I, there are a few people in the in the meeting, um, Mr. McNabb and so on, that maybe right. there's some public comment that someone someone would like to make. Some yeah, comment. that's that's appropriate. Is uh, anybody have anything to say about this project? Who's listening on this meeting? You're, you're, uh, Terry, you're you're uh, muted. <laughs> huh? Can you hear there me you now? Go. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm Terry McNabb, and. Um, I'm representing the, all of our, we have a lot of the abutters, uh, the abutting properties um, around this project. Um, uh, it's, they're in a trust, the uh, Terrence McNabb um, and Betty McNabb Family Trust. I'm the trustee of that. And um, just wanted to let you know, I've spoken with both John and Mark and you know our families in support of the project. Um, we think it's a great idea. And um, we do have, um, we've, my grandmother granted that easement many years ago um, over over our land and we gained rights to parking of that and we um, we need that and like it but um, you know beyond that I'm sure we're going to be able to work everything out and um, I think that um, I think it's a great idea and we support the project. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Okay, um, I'll, read, I'll, I'll read them again, Bill, and then you can comment, 145-65. I have, I have one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Dolly. Um, so in the specially permitted area, it says, um, so this is C2, one to six dwelling units within a structure existing on the lot for which a building permit has been issued as of 1989 provided sufficient off-street parking is available on the site. And then of course it's mixed use. So this building you're built is 1989. Do we assume the building permit was given by January of 89 or do we need to see something? Um, uh, boy. I can't imagine I've... a building like that is, is like built in, you know, 30 days, but um, I don't know. It says your bill says 1989 on public record. Mm -hmm. uh, Dolly, if you don't mind, what, what what are you reading from? Is that from section 65 or? Yeah. No, it's, it's um, under what? DCD permitted uses. And it's 145 27 C2. Allowed by special permit. So 145 27 C2. That's the main sentence that allows this to be able to happen. Well, you know, we could we could make it subject to confirmation of the uh, date of the building permit because um, I'm pretty sure for this project there's a building permit somewhere in the uh, building inspector's files. I just wanted to well, uh... actually, I guess what we thought we were applying under was the for mixed use. To be residential commercial, so I'm not sure, um, you know, what one to six dwelling units within a structure, you know, speaks to if it's if it's actually to convert an entire building, mm. or you know, so I guess maybe there's something of a uh, a conflict there within the bylaw as to which. You're kidding. What, <laughs> what do we fall under? <laughs> and I guess it's up to you guys, um, but um, 
I think that what we what we thought it was under, or at least what I thought it was under, was mixed use residential commercial. Yeah, uh, me as well. Did um Eric? Did you go see Eric on this one, John? I I, I didn't. Um, just came right to I, us. I think, uh, we we appealed it. Mark Mark spoke to him, um, and um, Mark's opinion. I mean, I'm sorry, Eric's opinion was Section One Forty Five Twenty Seven C Three. States okay. that mixed use residential commercial are permitted in the DCD district by a special permit uh, from the zoning board. Viola does not define residential. And, and, and at this time, Mark was asking also about co condominiumizing them. Yeah. But, you know, we're not, we're not doing that, at least not now. Um, maybe down the road in terms of a legal ownership, but I don't, I don't think Mark is envisioning doing that at, at this juncture. Um, so you're here strictly for mixed use. I'm okay right. with what everybody else is. I, yeah, I, yeah, I am. I think so too. Okay. But it was a good catch though, Dell. I was wondering where you're going with the date of the uh, permit. Because I, I did read that, but um, I was going under the mixed use um, issue. Yeah. I can find out more exactly when the building permit was issued, but. Was, gee, if I wanted to take, technically, if I wanted to take a building and make a bunch of units, I'll just make one of them commercial and I'll have mixed use. <laughs> right, right. For sure. Okay. You wanna go through the uh, criteria, Bill? Yes, please. Okay, 145-65 sub, sub paragraph A, adequacy of the site in terms of size for the proposed uses. Buildings. I don't, I don't what it is. Yeah. yeah, right. It's I don't see any big changes coming along. Okay. Uh, Subparagraph B, suitability of the site for the proposed use. Um, it's it's kind of a, a place we wanted to try to build some housing. I know. I, I, I love the concept of putting <laughs> residentials in the downtown that I could that we someone could walk. To. Me, I, I'm already assuming I'm renting one of them um, that I could walk to the to the bank. <laughs> I'll be neighbors with John and Mary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We might be moving in. I don't know. There you go. Um, Subparagraph C, impact on traffic flow and safety. Um, yeah, I agree with John. I don't see a huge impact there. It's not, not measurable by traffic engineering standards, that's for sure. Subparagraph D, impact on neighborhood visual character, including views and vistas. Uh, I'd say no change. No change. No change. Subparagraph E. Rowdy of parties. I mean, I, there's probably a possibility of a rowdy party or something, but you know, that's. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Subparagraph E. Adequacy of method of sewage disposal, source of water, and drainage. Um, and that's to be determined by the Board of Health with the submitted yeah. septic design. And it's on right. town water. And it's town it's water. Town water. Yep. Town water yep. Subparagraph F. Adequacy of utilities and other public services. I uh, don't see any impact there. I think um, the, the water department is going to make you go to an inch and a half uh, feeder. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, Beth, you got to get a copy of those comments to John um, if he hasn't already got them so he can see that. Yeah. Um, and subparagraph G, impact on ground and service water quality and other environmental and natural resource considerations. I don't see any impact of that at all. No, no impact. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll make a motion. I did find it, Bill, by the way. So I'll make a motion that the proposed use will not have an adverse effects, which will balance as beneficial effects on either the neighborhood or the town in view of the particular characteristics of the site. Third second. second. Yes. <laughs> Only member, Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Yes. And Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes, Bill Cadigan, too. So. All right, that motion carries. Is there a motion on the special permit? Okay, that's that one I gotta look at here. Is, is it oh, did you ever find the legal notice? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I was in the wrong, I, yeah. <laughs> I thought this, me, uh, up until like four o'clock today, I thought this meeting was next week. So I'm, oh. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, I, I moved to grant a special permit. Uh, to CNJ Realty Trust uh, under zoning bylaw 145-65 and 145-273 
um, to add four two bedroom apartments and two one bedroom apartments to 241 Main Street. Um, before they get second in Darlene, um, are we just going on a mixed use and not really caring about the number of bedrooms at this point? I'm just saying what they what they propose to add. So you just read it off, okay. Yeah. Because if they come back and say, well, we don't really want four two bedroom, we want three two bedroom and, and, and three one bedroom. You know, I don't want to, I don't know if that's- Could we say up to then? Yes. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, that's a good point. If I don't- You want to lock yourself in, John, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, there may be reasons why Mark might find that, well, maybe you can only do um, three, one unit, yeah. uh, one bedroom, and, and the other three, four, two bedrooms. So. You never know when you start taking buildings apart, you, you might find some surprises. Yeah. And any consideration the board can give. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, that's, I guess. Would you like to amend your motion then, darling? I don't know how you would say it. I know. I'm happy to amend it. Um, up to um, six, up to adding up to six um, residential units. Residential units. Is that, yeah. does up that to, up to, yeah, up happy? to six. Yeah, up to six. I think that would be appropriate. Then, if they wanted to make a bigger suite and, and reduce the five units, then you'd still, you still you just couldn't be make it more than six. I don't know if you'd make, I don't think you'd be able to put more than six in there, anyways, John, looking at the floor plans. It'd be pretty tight, anyways. Right, right. So I'll correct that by by saying by adding up to six uh, residential units. Okay, uh, and I'll second that. Yeah, I'm still, um, I'm I'm still thinking about. Um, I don't think you want to just say adding units. You want to say reconfiguring the floor by plan. Converting by converting something like that. You, you could say reallo reallocating to commer commercial existing commercial units and up to six residential units. That's probably the better way to say it. I, I'm gonna, since nobody's second, I'm gonna friendly restate my motion. <laughs> um, I move to grant a special permit to CNJ Realty Trust under zoning bylaw 145-65 and 145-27C3 to convert the building to convert the building. Darling, can I make a suggestion? Yeah, please. To, to, to reallocate the existing commercial space to include up to six residential units. I like that. Sounds good. That's is my there, motion. Uh, at 241 Main Street. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. And, I, and I'll second that. It's, it's okay. a wonderful motion. All right. <laughs> Polling the members, Darlene. Of course, yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicki. Um, let me think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes, Bill Cadigan. Okay, so the motion carries. Um, we have- uh, Thank you. John, you know this, we have 14 days to file the decision. Uh, you'll get a copy of it in the mail with the town clerk stamp showing the date of filing. And um, then there's a 20 day appeal period. And uh, at, the, uh, at the end of that appeal period, you can collect a letter from the town clerk saying no appeals have been filed if that's the case. And you need to record this decision and take your evidence of recording and the town clerk's letter to the building department and get your billing permit. Let's, uh, uh, thank you, Bill. And um, <clears throat> I, I know we have a few more things to check off. Obviously, as, yeah. as you noted in the hearing, that the the, bill, the board of health and uh, the planning board. But uh, thank you for your assistance and then helping to make this uh, project uh, at least one step closer to reality. Yeah. Cool. I'd like to thank the board also for your, for your time and for the approval. Thank you. A pleasure. Don't, John, don't forget to send out a new, new address uh, cards for me, will you? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave. <laughs> All right. 
Well, what else have we got? <clears throat> Don't want to keep you guys. Thank you very much again. Have nice, a good thanks, night. Nice. All right. No problem. Looks like we have a, a planning board referral. What's that under agenda and preliminaries? On the work session 3.1. Oh, oh, okay. Speaking of which, under there, under work session, it says that the warrant closes March 1st. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's, we put that's, it, next, that's next week. We're going to have to put a placeholder in if we want to, you know, do anything. We got I already it. put in a placeholder for the dog grooming thing. You did? Okay. okay. Yeah. I haven't done anything for the for the um, then, age then. restricted housing. Yeah. Okay, so 32 Main Street planning board mandatory referrals. Is that the yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. I think that's um oh what's his name? He was uh, George. Is that George Boyer's house? Is that is that really a he wants to make a food yeah, truck parking I'm lot? Of, it's sold and I, nobody's done anything with it. And um, I think that's George Boyer's old house. Uh -huh. for, those, for everyone else on the zoning board, George Boyer used to be on the zoning board back in the right, day. He was. That's a tear down that place. Did, when he, did his wife sell it after he passed away? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Because yeah. sign, his sign is still out there, like watchmaker or something. Yep. So, um, um, could could Beth just give us a summary of, of this? What, what the? What um, the I can, uh, if I can screen share. I think I lost my screen share. Oh, here we go. Got it. I'll just put it up, and you can take a look at it. Um, it's in a pretty preliminary stage right now. Oh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, pretty preliminary. Uh, conceptual site plan. Um, the application, yeah, it was in your folders, but they're um, essentially uh, created. This is the, this is a nice location because it has access to the rail trail. Um, and this is all we have right now. It's going to be, you know, temporary um, food trucks. Um, so there's, there's a lot to do in terms of the Board of Health. Um, but these are basically picnic tables. Um, this will be a bathhouse, restrooms, and um, you know, we, it's a place to for uh, food for waste. Um, yeah, it will be a teardown, as you can see. There, <laughs> but well, yeah, it looks like he's going to clear cut the lot. <laughs> yes, yeah, so down. you you can certainly make that comment. <laughs> I noticed that too. If yeah. you, yeah, because I mean it's all a lot of parking. Uh, there's nothing in the application about the surface of the parking area, I, whether it's you know gravel or or um, paved. I'm I'm pretty sure that's there's a lot more to to come out in the site plan review. Oh, so this is again yeah. very preliminary. If they paved that much of the a lot, they'd have a problem with impervious surfaces. <laughs> That's yeah. huge. That's like so. three quarters of the lot. You, yeah. If you want, I can uh, pull up the application and you can see there oh. are a few photographs of what they have. They're kind of basing it um, on another park. Okay, that's um, what that is. Okay, I did see that in the application. Yeah. So you can is see, it, I guess. It's food trailers. I'm sorry? Is it food? It's food trucks. Yeah, food trucks would just pull in, park, and serve. It's, it, it's probably going to look similar to this one here, where you have the food trucks. And That's interesting. So so this is going to be similar with the rail trail. Once it's extended to be up behind that, it's going to be like what they have in downtown Pepperell, where they've actually created a boom for like the local restaurants, where people go in there and get their sodas and their sandwiches, and they go, on a, go for a walk on the trail. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good uh, idea. I think I like the idea. Yeah, I would like to yeah, yeah make sure yeah, they leave some trees. Food trucks are excellent too. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> huh. So this is yeah. thought. Well, you know, we we I, I'd like to get the opinion of of, of a long-standing um, 
resident of Townsend, um, and Mr. Barrett, since he's since he's continued to to watch our meeting. <laughs> ah, I don't see him on. Or maybe he left. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Uh, oh, yeah. Dave. I, I, when I heard this, I thought, well, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I guess I share some of the boards. You know, I think someone mentioned that it looks like you're going to uh, be paving a very large spot, but you know, I guess maybe the planning board would provide this not all hard topped. I, I just think the idea of having a, a whole building lot in, turned into a parking lot is not a, you know, yeah. impervious surface is not a good thing. If you look at it the- It might be very, you know, very compatible with the rail trail, but then I, I guess I wonder what, what happens to the other businesses um, well, what's that the are there. Are they, maybe they're not that accessible to the uh, rail trail. I don't know, but- Yeah. But if you look at the picture of, of the suggested site, that it's all, it looks like it's crushed stone or, or um, gravel. Yeah. 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 That, that's the, uh, the other lot, right? I, I guess the only other thing I would say is, and and some of you will remember years ago when we had a charrette about what we want the town to look like, and uh, there was a an effort back then to say we want to try to keep Main Street so it doesn't turn into one big strip of commercial yeah, business nine we didn't want to root nine, route nine or, or 119 in acton and it seems the tide of uh commerce or residential development makes it harder and harder to do i don't know what you can do about it but obviously this is a, a another step in that tendency towards converting what used to be residential i know there's another lone residence down there in mm -hmm. the harbor in between mcdonald's and I think uh, Patriot Pizza that yeah. I can't imagine is long for the that world. That looks lonely. Well, they've, um, they, it is they, commercial, um, right? Well, they, they, it is. I think it is, Vicki. Yeah, they yeah. rezoned those lots. Those three lots got rezoned commercial. They were supposed to be residential. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, I spoke against it at the time, but... Um, now you got beat. Well, George right. Boyd was 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 he had a hand in it. He wanted to get him commercial so he could oh, yeah. sell his property. Oh, they, they everybody thought the lots would be worth a lot more as commercial lots. And uh, surprise, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, from from a from an individual perspective, I I would I would give my support to this project. I, I like the idea. Yeah, it would create a lot of traffic. It would create more traffic, though, wouldn't it? Well, it's in a it's in an area that's got a lot of traffic. It, it that was that was another reason that we kept them um, residential was uh, it wouldn't create a lot of traffic because that Edward Road is a nasty intersection. Somebody got killed there. Um, I forget when, but um, and this is I how far away from Edward Road is this? Does anybody know? It's like it's like a couple of hundred feet. So. On so the we opposite might, side of the road. Yeah, but curb cut is a curb cut, you know. I just think that it's going to cause a ton of more, a ton more traffic to a spot that you can't even get out. You know, you can't, you wouldn't be able to take a left out of the place. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. You know, that's the same thing. Could, it's the same thing. Try taking a left out of traffic Canada. light. Yeah, and I think it's horrible to take a left out of Hannaford too. <laughs> I don't see it. That's I don't see it as going to be that, that big of a of a burden on or increased but traffic. It'll but it will, it will be seasonal. It will be seasonal. Yeah. People yeah. park there for for the rail trail. But I don't, why would it only be seasonal? Well, because I people don't use a rail trail. The people don't tend. There's not about much traffic on the rail trail. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's to I say that it's only going to be? <laughs> For rail trail, I mean, if, if it's going to be a different place to eat in town, you can have a lot of the businesses that are probably going to take advantage and use it too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so maybe honest, that's one of the restrictions. Is is yeah? If we're concerned about the traffic, is outside. I think it's going to self-regulate. Um, yeah. They don't have a lot of people wanting to sit at a picnic table in thirty-degree weather. Um, yeah, but they might drive up to get something because I mean, do a you know, take out town and the places. Yeah. Yeah. No, the food trucks will run in, in cold weather too, and they do in yeah. Boston. And, yeah. But like I said, they have pretty good food in the trucks. Yeah, but that that's in Boston where there's a demand. I can't see there's going to be a demand to for a food truck in Townsend. That's not part of the warmest warmest season. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, yeah, I have a hard time seeing nine, that there would be nine of them. I yeah. don't know that we could support that many. <laughs> I, I mean, you have Starlight, you have Nets. I mean, they're probably going to have old car shows there or something like yeah. that, you know. Well, I, I, ideal. All we have to do is either either say we support it or no no comment like everybody does to us, or we we, we are against it. <laughs> no, yeah, we, or, or you I, might suggest a traffic study. It, it couldn't hurt if your concern yeah. is traffic. Yeah, that's part of site plan. You could traffic study, and and we're concerned about losing uh, every tree on the lot. Mm -hmm. then, well, I'd, gonna... I'd be concerned about site site uh, view uh, pulling in and out of there. Right now, there's a hill. Um, yeah. I would imagine they'd have to do some topography to be able to see coming in and out of there better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's this is Mike Crowley again. Can I offer something on the previous conversation about season uh, operation seasons? Uh -huh. Sure. I, I spoke with the applicant, and um, at the moment, their business plan is to only operate seasonally. They're not planning on operating in the wintertime. Um, obviously, that would be something that would have to get codified in some way if you wanted that to be addressed. But just for informational purposes, that's where uh -huh. the applicant is currently proposing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just had a question, Bill, if I could. Sure. Uh, I was just wondering, this is coming to before you for referral of site plan review, but is yeah. is this something that is uh, permitted, you know, you, you, they did need zoning permission for this? I don't think so. I think this use? was converted to commercial, so I think they can do it with the planning board site review. Okay. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, the, on, uh -huh. the only issues would be uh, if the Board of Health uh, would require inspection of the truck or something, you know. Mm. Yeah, the building commissioner did um, already opine that is a by right. Okay, yeah. thank you. So yes, it's a fairly low I'm, impact use, I would yeah. say. Well, so. whatever, I'm, I'm an hour away and I haven't eaten supper yet, so I wanna. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Beth, can you, can you write the comments? Uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah, if I could just review um, concern with traffic, um, concern with uh, tree cutting on the property. There's a, it's fairly well treed right now. And then um, site, uh, what do you call it? Site view in if for ingress and egress. There's a term for that, a uh, technical mm. term that the highway department would know. Your site distance, the planning board will know, but yeah. those are the three that I have. Is there anything else? There was some expressed concern about clearing the lot, clear cutting the whole lot. Yeah, clear cutting. Thank you. Yeah, um, just got that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, you could say traffic, but you could also say that it, it's a particularly dangerous area for a curb cut on Route 119. Okay. And uh, some some traffic control may be required. Okay. Other than that, <laughs> <laughs> um, just I, I just want to go go it's back. It's better a little than bit. no comment, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, go, just going back on the other on the other hearing, I'll make a motion that we authorize William Cadigan to sign on behalf of the board the the um the decision for C and J Realty Trust. Thank you. For a special permit. Second. <laughs> I thought it was too late to say that. <laughs> oh no. no, we haven't closed the. We haven't closed meeting. the hearing, the meeting yet. Okay. We can do it, yeah. yeah. Okay, we have uh, a second. Pulling the members, Darlene. Yes. David. Yes. Uh, Vicky. Yes. Uh, Sean. Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. Yeah, as long as we take action within the within the meeting itself good, to do things. Good catch, do David. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Comments. We good. I think yeah. so. Let's let's. Um, uh, can you can you um, release the screen, please? Yeah, thank you, Ben. I wanted to look at my. Uh, so we got this. That's it for the planning board. Yeah. Um, and your bylaw proposal, you you touched on that already, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to have to. Uh, um, well. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to take a look at some of the uh, assessor's maps for downtown and see what makes sense. Is that something, Bill, you want to push through to March 1st or do you, or you want to maybe take a little bit more 
careful approach for the fall? Uh, yeah, you know, we could leave it off of this town meeting and, and um, the planning board could hold the hearing uh, on it if we can get ready by uh, April 11th. Or, well, they'd still have to advertise for yeah. April 11th, so. I don't know. Let me think about it. No, if I can comment, I don't think we did it last year, but certainly many times in years past, we've had a special within the annual. Mm. That's um, true, yeah. And I, yeah. I, I don't remember if we had one last year. It seems to me we did, but Let's in say fact, no, we did. We had it in we had it in December. We had a special within a special, didn't we? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It all becomes a blur after a while. Really? <laughs> Uh, all right. But, uh, I'll, well, I'll bid you folks good night, and I'm going to head out, and you can finish up your Thanks, business. John. Have a good one. Good night, John. See you thank later. You. Good night. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Anything else we need to handle, Beth? No, you look, that looks great. We okay. need to get David home for dinner. Okay. <laughs> yep. At this point, it's going to be breakfast. Motion to adjourn. Second. A second. Um, polling the members, Darlene. Yes. Dave Chanel. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sean. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Motion carries.